Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Maxwell Render Hot Tips. My name is James Coleman and I'm a product design graduate and Maxwell Render mentor and tutor in South East England. In today's hot tip I'm going to be talking about using an HDR image emitter. This is a technique commonly used to simulate TV screens and computer monitors and I get asked about it a lot. So I thought it was high time I did a tutorial. This is the scene that I'll be using today. As you can see it's a very very basic black frame on a floor with image based lighting providing my illumination. And at the moment, in the middle of this black frame, I've got a white emitter. And this is where I'd like to put my computer screen. Now, the first thing I need is an image to use as my texture. So this is where I go into Photoshop. And here you can see I've made a quick test card. And you can see down here that the resolution is 1920 by 1080. So this is a full HD image. But this would usually be your screenshot or your TV screen or whatever image you need to use as your texture. But the important thing is that before I save this, I go to Image, Mode, and select 32 bits per channel. This will convert this image into a high dynamic range image. If, like me, you've got more than one layer, Photoshop will ask you if you want to flatten the image. I'm going to say don't flatten in this case. And now I can go to File, Save As, and pick the Radiance format. This is the HDR file format, and it will allow me to use this texture as an image emitter in Maxwell. Now I've already saved this test card earlier here, so I'm going to cancel out of that and go back to Maxwell Studio. But now to use that texture as my emitter, I need to open up my emitter material. Here it is in the materials manager, so I'm going to double click to open it. And with the emitter selected, I need to change my type from custom to HDR image. And clicking on this checker box will bring up the texture picker. And then clicking on this little folder icon down here will allow me to load the texture I want to use. There's my texture, so just double click to open it. And then if I close down my texture picker and my material editor and enable fire, I can now see that this texture is acting as an emitter. And in fact, I can verify that the colors coming out of the emitter are the colors of the texture because underneath on the floor, you can see yellow, magenta, and cyan. And if I activate this bounce card here and move my camera around, you can see that the colors on the screen really are coming out. I'm gonna undo a couple of steps with Command or Control Z to get back to where I was. Now I know that my image emitter is working properly, I can select a real screenshot to use. And so here I have my screenshot to use on my computer monitor. However, the intensity of the emitter is not governed by the image itself. It's governed by this multiplier here. And I need to make sure that the image is the right intensity. Now, before I made this emitter, my camera was properly exposed for the rest of the image. So instead of adjusting my camera exposure, I'm going to adjust the emitter intensity. To help me get a realistic result, I'm going to deactivate the environment lighting so that the only lighting in my scene is being provided by the emitter. So in the environment window, change the type to none. Then I can lower my emitter intensity until it looks approximately correct. Obviously, lower values will decrease the intensity, higher values will increase the intensity. In this case, 0.4 works for me. So now I'm going to turn back on my image-based lighting. And I know that my computer monitor should be properly exposed, but I can still always adjust the intensity if necessary. One more thing that may be useful before ending is to consider how to achieve a realistic reflection on the screen. Now, of course, modern computer monitors and TV screens have anti-reflective coatings and matte finishes in order to not have distracting reflections on the screen. However, sometimes they do add a lot of realism. And of course, there's a variety of ways to achieve them. For example, you could literally model a pane of glass in front of the screen, or you could use a little material trick that I'll show you now. Still with my emitter material open, I'm gonna to go to the material properties, right click and add layer. Now this is going to give me a new BSDF over the top of my emitter. And what I'm gonna do is just with the BSDF selected, turn the roughness down to zero, so it's a mirror finish, and turn my ND, which is my index of refraction, down a little to a more realistic value. For example, about 1.3. And then I'm going to click on this little N here to change my layer from the normal blending mode to the additive blending mode. And now you can see that I've got my emitter texture and some reflections on top of it, just like a typical TV screen. And using the ND value in my material, I can control how much reflection I have. For example, if I turn the camera to face the television, 
and I decide that I'd like more reflection, then I can increase the ND, giving me some more reflections. However, if I turn the camera view to be almost parallel to the TV screen, and I decide that I have too much reflection, then I can decrease the ND, and decrease the reflection. Of course, this is only one way to achieve this reflection. For true realism, what you would do, of course, is to have the image emitter slightly behind the true front of the screen, which would be plastic or glass material. This is just one way of getting the effect. But I hope that's answered any questions about having an HDR image emitter. Remember that the important thing is that when you're in Photoshop, you change your image to 32 bits by going to Image, Mode, 32 bits per channel. And then save it as the Radiance Format you'll see HDR as a suffix. Thanks very much for watching, I hope this was useful, and I'll see you again soon.